Oh hi. You're probably wondering why I'm pretending to drink from this coffee cup. Will this serve to humanize me as a person and not someone who's going to steal your pancreas over the next 20-30 minutes of this video? Probably, anyway. Welcome to the debut episode of Cryptism Creepers. I'm your host, Pigeon, and today we're going to be really pushing the bounds of, mate, what are you on about? Appalachia, and especially Kentucky, became known for its violent feuds at- Wait, hold on. Appalachia is a region of the East United States that spreads from Pennsylvania all the way down to Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia, with a mountain range that runs all the way up to Maine, and even further beyond that into Canada. They don't want you to know about that. Is Canada a cryptid? No, these mountains are actually older than the rings of Saturn and have endured pretty much everything from allegedly starting the Ice Age all the way to the natives moving in 16,000 years ago to colonial frontiers, a US civil war, and even Fallout 76. And in that time, it's fair to say, people have seen some stuff and unfortunately endured Fallout 76. Obviously, everyone knows the classics, so we're going to go over them because they are part of the folklore. But if you want to hear more things about Mothman and Bigfoot, there are like a plethora of videos out there that you can go to. In this one, I kind of want to focus on some of the more, I don't want to say niche, but at least lesser known ones. I'm trying to utilize different sources to try and get the best idea of what's going on. So I'm only actually going to use any creatures that I find that have more than one source because I don't really want to be out here telling you random two sentence horror stories from Reddit. Although if it is a cool story, I might throw it in, but I'll tell you what to take with a pinch of salt. One of the reasons I'm being a bit more thorough is because I'm currently on the wiki fandom for Appalachian creatures and like Mothman isn't here, but like West Virginia is. Is West Virginia encrypted? All that being said, I'm not here to tell you what's fact or fiction. You can make up your own mind in that. You're a big boy or girl or other or none. It's 2023, guys. The Snallygaster. The Snallygaster is a half reptile, half bird that terrorized the Maryland area with a metallic beak lined with razor sharp teeth, and on occasion sporting octopus like tentacles, but that was only in the manga. It swoops silently from the sky to pick up and carry off its victims, and the earliest stories claim that this monster sucked the blood of its victims, much like an ex of mine. Its first sighting was way back in the 1730s when a bunch of German immigrants got. wasted, and saw what they call the Schnellergeist, or quick spirit. It was pretty much resigned to folklore until 1909 when reports started to come out in the papers. You're probably thinking, as you will with a lot of these, that these are just tales to scare kids, right? Like, these aren't, like, adults don't believe in these. Like, say, like, the president. Like, the president of the United States. Like, the president of the United States wanted to hunt a Stanley Gas. The Teddy Roosevelt almost cancelled a hunting trip to Africa just to go and try and hunt a Stanley Gaster. That is how popular these reports were. There's a few reported sightings of the Snallygaster from footprints in the snow in New Jersey to a woman almost taken in West Virginia, and someone even claiming it laid an egg the size of a barrel. But then like surely that's leaving evidence, so like awful lie, man's probably gotta try and up his speech skill on that one. A man in Castown, Ohio once reported to the Valley Register that there was a strange creature flying over his area making horrible screeching noises, which I think is also the origin story for Axel Rose. He described it as having, quote, two huge wings, a horny head, and a 20 foot tail. The last sighting of a Snallygaster is that it died in Washington County when it was overcome by the fumes of a moonshine still and fell from the sky into a 2,500 gallon vat of alcohol. Which, listen, I've had some nights out, but someone needs to drive this lad home. The only thing known to keep a Snallygaster at bay is painting a seven point star, which can allegedly still be found on buildings in the area today, but unfortunately I had a hard time verifying that, which, in fairness, isn't the most unbelievable part of this story. The Dwyo. Next up is the Dwyo, which is also called the Hexen Wolf, which is a sick band name, by the way. Being a bipedal wolf-like creature, it's said to stand almost six foot tall with the same stature of a man, using its four legs as arms, which to me is just a really funny concept. First sighting comes from 1944 from where else but Frederick County, Maryland. Same place as the Stanley Gaster, and it's known to be its mortal enemy. So expect that at the next crater clash. Its eggs are reported to incubate for 20 years, which has led to the theory that between the Dwyo and the Sykesville monster, that these might actually be offspring of the Snallygaster. But like, basic biology says that makes no sense because one's half wolf and the other's a lizard. But even in the cryptic canon, half wolf lizard men probably isn't that insane. In 1965, it picked up steam when a man under the alias of John Becker reported to the local paper of his dealings with the Dwyo. Becker went to investigate his yard after hearing a strange noise. 
The Dwayo stood on its hind legs and came towards him. He then fought the creature until it ran off into the woods. I know, this is like Marvel level cinema right now. Becca described it as having long black hair, a bushy tail, and looking like a bear, so probably a bear, John. There were three more reported sightings in 66, 76, and 78, all describing the same thing of a wolf-like creature on its hind legs. So it's fair to say there's something very odd going on in Frederick County, Maryland, other than moonshiners and probably bears. So there's a weird catch-22 with these kind of things because animals based on actual wildlife, it's very easy to say that the victim probably just in a panic state misremembered what they were seeing um but also having an actual animal like cryptid is a lot more plausible than like a dragon who steals people's souls and writes andrew tate fan fiction so the hopkinsville goblins just saying it is like sweat in this room so i'm gonna have like seven hairstyles by the end of this Oh yeah, all right, we're rocking this from now on. The Hopkinsville Goblin case, also known as the Kelly Greenman case, is the name given to a series of connected incidents in 1955 that was said to be related to extraterrestrial activity. Basically what happened here is a gang of three foot goblin-like creatures with upright pointed ears, yellow eyes, thin limbs, of which the legs have said to have been devolved to the point of atrophy, long arms and claw-like talons decided to terrorize a farmhouse in Kentucky, which we've all done at some point. This one's interesting because it has a multitude of different witnesses that aren't even connected to each other. Like, there's two different families who are in the farmhouse, there's the people on the street who had no social connection to the families. The state police force has seen these things, and even a state trooper who said he saw lights in the sky that night. But to be fair, if there's one place to see lights, it's probably the sky. It's just stars, isn't it? They never actually broke into the house, but they would be popping up at doors and windows like some weird incel house of the dead. So the family got panicked and managed to get out of there and drive to the local police station. Seeing how distraught this family actually were, the police decided to take it seriously, drive back and actually shoot at these creatures. Now at this point, I'm with you, man. I love me some goblins. Willem Dafoe, great actor. But they did say that their motions seem to defy gravity. Like they just kind of float around and find themselves in high spaces. And you start to think, three foot, bright yellow eyes, long claws, pointy features. Did you get cyberbullied by a bunch of owls? Annoyingly, this is not the only time in this list that owls will be misinterpreted by the public as some otherworldly beings. But this one really does kind of make a strong point, which is kind of sad because like, I like goblins. I want, I want to believe, you know? The moon-eyed people. I'm gonna apologize because this one ended up being way less cool than the name suggested it would be. It's said in Cherokee folklore that before the Europeans decided to come over and spread love and togetherness between us and the native tribes, that there was another race of people who lived with them in the Carolinan mountains known as the Moon-Eyed People. They were described as having pale, white skin, bearded faces, and were said to be sensitive to the sun. They had large blue eyes that were sensitive to sunlight, so they only came out at night. Hence the name Moon Eyed People. There's many stories as how they ceased to be. Some saying it was the Cherokees that drove them out, others saying it was the Creek tribe. But some also say that they still live in underground caves and patrol Twitch streams for women to harass. Now this is where it gets really interesting because if you look at Native Americans, some of you eagle-eyed viewers might spot, they're not white. So where did these people come from? The known theory is that a bunch of Welshmen sailed off in 1171 across the Atlantic, landing in Alabama, and then being pushed north into the Tennessee mountains never to be heard from again. Which I mean, of course they don't like sunlight. They're British. It also enforces the fact that Columbus wasn't even the second person to make it to America. That was Leif Erikson. And then even before him was Prince Madog. And then there's even stories of Irish monks being able to get there. So America, if you could stop teaching that, that'd be great. But unfortunately, the Moon-Eyed people weren't some technologically advanced master race that could give us our dreams beyond our wildest desires. They were just vitamin deficient Welshmen. Are Welsh people cryptids? Indrid Cold. Indrid Cold, also known as the Smiling Man, named for his known behavior of smiling at random strangers, which is also the MO of the penguins from Madagascar. It's said he still visits West Virginia to this day, which is surprising considering the first sighting was in 1966. He's commonly known to be an alien humanoid who is generally associated with UFO activities and is allegedly related to the men in black. Not like the Will Smith movies, but like, yeah, kind of like the Will Smith movie. In his first sighting, he's being described as being over six foot tall, so 
He has the first square on Tinder Bingo. And wearing a reflective green suit with a black belt. He had a dark complexion and small beady eyes set far apart. He was described as not having any ears, nose or hair, which honestly, no one got the memo when they were drawing him. Like, does no one care for the source material anymore? It's also said he had slick backed hair, a tan complexion and wore a green or blue suit with the top buttons done up, which honestly, man's got riz. Between October 16th and November 2nd in 1966, there were three separate reports of this grinning man, which some are creepy, some are a little bit more on the nose. Cause he don't have one. The first being a pair of boys from New Jersey who saw a weird figure smiling at them from across a fence. He had no hair, no ears, no nose. Although we can't be sure this isn't a quote from Harry Potter himself. The second, a man by the name of Woodrow Derringer who when driving down the highway, a UFO came down and a man telepathically told him, My name is Indrid Cold. I mean no harm. I just want to learn about humans. Before revealing he was from the planet Lanulos. Now the third sighting is a little bit more spooky. In Point Pleasant, West Virginia, which yes, is where the Mothman is from, the Lilit family were having some poltergeist problems. The daughter said she awoke to find a man standing over her bed, smiling at her, to which he screamed, pulled the cover over her head, and when she looked back, man was gone. Now here's where it gets interesting because that's three different sightings in three different states around the same time frame. Woodrow Derringer was told telepathically that there were two other bald smiling men um, which to me just screams 2000s ska band that can't let go. The goat man. Some of them do explain themselves so when I say goat man and you think half man half goat you're probably right. There's quite a few entries in different iterations of Goatman, like they kept rebooting his character to try and appeal to different audiences. So I just kind of picked over the most interesting ones and I'm going to tell you those. The legend of the Louisiana Goatman tells of him killing young couples in their car and also eating the neighborhood pets, which is a really specific MO. Uh, yeah, Chief, uh, we found a male and a female approximately 20 years old dead in their car. The goat man. There was bullet holes. Find their car. There's also reports of him breaking into people's homes and um, non-consenting them, man and woman alike. There's two conflicting DC Comics level origin stories for the Louisiana Goat Man. And the first man is that he was a shepherd and that teenagers killed his flock. So he went on this kind of crazy crackhead rampage on any teenagers that he saw, which is kind of understandable. Or there's the super evil villain route, which is that he was a mad scientist who was conducting experiments on goats and managed to turn himself into a half man, half goat and of course is hungry for blood as all goats are. As far as goat man stories go, the Waterford Sheep Man is like a little weak in my opinion, because it sounds more just like a predatory animal and less like an anthrop... 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 Man beast. It's said to terrorize Waterford, Pennsylvania in the early 70s, but everything that I've seen is just attacking animals and killing them and like literally isn't anything to say that this isn't just some crazy animal that's jacked up on creatine and shotguns bang energy. The Maryland Goatman, because of course, Maryland is just breeding cryptid K-pop armies at this point. He's similar to the Louisiana Goatman in the sense that he was once a mad scientist, but in this one, he attacks people with axes. It has also been speculated that he is also just a hermit, which as I said before, not a cryptid, just a crackhead. The Pope Lick Monster. And I just want you to know, I'm trying to keep this series at least somewhat ad friendly. And there is so many jokes I can't make right now. And I want to. And it is killing me. The public monster is a maneuver taught by priest to choir boy. Public monster is another goat humanoid from Louisville, Kentucky, and is one of my favorite goat men because of the law surrounding it. This one isn't so much about ripping you apart and trying to drink your blood, but more about just luring you to your death. Said to employ hypnosis and vocal mimicry to try and guide you onto train trestles. That's one of these train bridges because I, I, didn't, I didn't know what that was either. And force them to either be hit by a train or jump to their death. There is also stuff about him attacking people with an ax, but we've heard all that before. So I'm not gonna go through that, but I just thought since it's in here, you should know. This one's really interesting to me because all of these are like, he attacked and killed someone. He is so cool. But like this one actually has people who have reported to have jumped off or been hit by a train on this train trestle. So this one 
oddly feels the most grounded in reality for me. Now this could very easily be explained away by a lot of things such as the trees in the area dampening the sound so people can't hear an oncoming train once they step onto the track, but it definitely helps to feed the mythos of this creature. My favorite thing about this is that he has multiple origin stories, all of which I think are just ba badass. But first we have Circus Freak who escaped from a crash train, a Native American skimwalker who wants to take revenge on the new settlers, and a satanic farmer who sacrificed goats for demonic supernatural powers. You can pick your own favorite. My favorite part about this legend is like how hot they make these guys look like, bro, chill, I'm taken. If there's one thing that part creature humanoids has really taught me throughout this whole thing is that Maybe just as a species, we should just be a lot more open to the idea that furries have always existed. The Not Deer. As ambiguous as this title sounds, this isn't just everything that isn't a deer is a cryptid. This isn't some like deep philosophical Socrates idea. The Not Deer look like deer from a distance, but the closer you get, the more you notice something isn't quite right about them. Being described as having movements of a newborn deer despite being adults, the biggest giveaway is that these deer don't have eyes on the side of their head, but instead are front facing, meaning they're predators. All in all, after hearing this, it does just sound like this is a deer that's been drawn by AI. The only accounts I've actually seen of this animal are from Reddit and Tumblr, which usually would just make me throw this out. But that also kind of got me to thinking, if you did see a cryptid or some kind of otherworldly animal, where would you even go anymore? Like, where would you report this? Like, you, you're not gonna go and tell the police. You'd probably go to Reddit because that's where people are gonna believe you. So, like, all of these old monsters and cryptids are all from old, like, newspaper reports. And to be honest, you can, like, laugh at, like, just the Reddit posts as much as you want, but it holds just as much weight as someone in the 50s to someone now trying to take a crap in the woods and seeing what they don't really think is a bear. But the not deer are said to be creepy stalkers that will watch you from deep within the forest and give everyone a very unsettling feeling that you know there's a lot more intelligence behind the eyes than something of maybe a normal deer. If you go towards them, they will attack, uh, much like a middle-aged woman in a McDonald's. Wonderlights. Wonderlights, otherwise known as hinky punks or will-o'-the-wisps, are strange atmospheric lights found in things like graveyards and swamps that generally try and lead travelers away from the safe path and ultimately to their doom. Not quite like the little troglodyte characters from the Harry Potter game. There's not much more to them than the idea that they are just insidious souls or fairies trying to lead people to their deaths. But they have been seen around the world and have some interesting tales related to like things like the Will of the, Will of the Wisp and also the Jack-O-Lantern. Will is a wicked smith who is given a second chance by St. Peter at the gates of heaven but leads such a bad life that he ends up being doomed to wander the earth. The devil provides him with a single burning coal with which... <clears throat> the devil provides him with a single burning coal with which to warm himself, which he then uses to lure foolish travelers into the marshes. Which is obviously what pretty much any of us would do in that situation. The Irish version of the tale has a ne'er-do-well known as Drunk Jack or Stingy Jack, who makes a deal with the devil, offering up his soul to pay for his pub tab. I am so proud of my heritage right now like imagine having a bar tab that big the devil gets involved when the devil comes to collect his due jack tricks him by making him climb up a tree and drawing a cross underneath him so he can't come down which let's be honest is a pretty alpha move jack might be the first prank tuber in exchange for removing the cross the devil forgives jack's debt however because no one as bad as jack would ever make it into heaven jack is forced to walk to hell and ask the devil to let him in the devil denies him entrance to hell in revenge, but as a boon, he gives him one of the embers from the fires of hell to light his way through the twilight world, which is where all lost and condemned souls must wander. Jack then places it inside of a carved turnip to use as his lantern, which is where we get the name jack o lantern but There's something to think about next Halloween. West Virginia. We've covered this. I don't know what more needs to be said, but obviously there's conversations that we need to have. The Thunderbird. Now this one does actually have a different name, I can't say. So we're just gonna roll with Thunderbird and enjoy it. This cryptid is known as a Thunderbird, not to be confused with the show about puppets. It's said to be a pterosaur from the late Cretaceous era that's been spotted around Pennsylvania, mainly Greenville and Erie County, and is reminiscent of other reported sightings of a similar creature in Texas in 1976 and 1982. It's said to have a 10 to 15 foot wingspan, which to point of perspective, 
The largest wingspan in North America is the California Condor with a 10 foot wingspan. And the largest in the world is the Wandering Albatross with a 12 foot wingspan. So this dude got some game. However, going further back in history, the Thunderbird is a mythical creature of native North American folklore, pertaining to tribes all over America from the East Coast, the Great Lakes, the Great Plains, and the South Coast. It is said to be a bird so big that flapping its wings cracks like thunder in the sky. And some tribes, such as the Algonquins, believe that this is a spirit protecting us from the underworld. This is the theme pretty much seen through most of the folklore, like the Ojibwe tribe, who I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, but they believe that this is a spirit that fights the spirits from the underworld and also punishes humans that break moral rules. Whereas the Menomini, God, I hope I'm saying that right. Menomini. See them as physical beings that control like the rain and the hail. Interestingly, they share the same belief with the Algonquins that it is a creature that helps fight the serpent lord of the underworld and stops them from coming up and eating the humans, which is good. Bigfoot. I know that this is like the most covered cryptid after maybe the Loch Ness Monster, but I, when I was doing my research, I found out that there's like a Power Rangers level of like variety amongst Bigfoots just in Appalachia. So we're going to dive in and check out the rare and legendary skins. The Wood Bugger or White Bigfoot. The Wood Bugger or much cooler name of White Bigfoot is, is pretty much, as you'd imagine, huge ape-like character. Uh, who was seen on the outskirts of Saltville, Virginia. It's said to have gotten its name by carrying children off into the woods like the Boogeyman, hence the name Woodbugger. The city of Norton, Virginia now holds an annual festival to celebrate the Woodbugger, where you can go on tours and try and catch it and all this kind of stuff, which to me is very odd because like, you're here celebrating something that drags children off into the woods. Like that's like me throwing a festival for Jared Fogel. There is another white Bigfoot in Pennsylvania, but there's nothing really interesting about that other than this video, which is absolutely hilarious. The Sykesville monster. The Sykesville monster is, as you'd guessed, big, hairy ape man. Said to be seven to eight feet tall and a cast of its footprints measure 13 inches long and seven inches wide. For context, Subway sandwiches only come in six and 12. So pretty big. There were two major sightings, one from a trucker in 1972 who said he saw it sitting down before it got up and ran into the woods, looking caked in mud from the waist down. The second is a man named Lon Stricker, who was fi fishing in the Patasco, how the hell do you say that? Who was fishing in the Patasco River when he noticed a stray dog barking at some brush. A seven to eight foot tall man emerged from the brush, causing the man to flee and call the police. When Strickler went back to the site, it was taped off and it's believed by the town to have been covered up by law enforcement. One theory is that this is an escaped uh, mental patient from the nearby Springsville State Hospital. Uh, although the superintendent of that hospital did also say that there was nothing going on out of the ordinary at the time, except for the fact that 10 to 12 different patients had checked themselves out, one or two of which could have been at harm to themselves or others. So why is that? Not out of the ordinary. Whirling Wumpus. I don't know what to tell you about this one because there's little information and there's almost too much information. So I'm going to just read to you exactly what the passage says because this is so unhinged, I can't even put it together. The Whirling Wimpers' favourite meals are people, turkey, deers, cows, even bears. Bears find them quite delectable when paired with fine red wine, so Wimpers' beware when hunting. It spins at a stunning 2150 RPM and usually only performs this act at sundown. I can't even begin to tell you how unhinged this passage actually is. When I first saw this, I laugh so hard my stomach hurt. Like just set the scene, right? You're in the forest and the sun is starting to fall. All of a sudden you see this ape spinning, right? Like just fidget spinning, like just going for it. Uh, what was it? 2000 times per minute. So to drill home how fast this is, a car tire at 60 miles per hour is spinning at 840 RPM. This thing, for reasons unknown to science, only at sunset, spins at 2000 RPM. With no further elaboration. 
What is going on? There's no context as to how or why. There is, this is the only mention of it spinning and I don't know why it's in here, but it's kind of plagued my dreams because I just imagine going into the woods and seeing an ape spinning at 35.8 times per second. The Yahoo. The West Virginian Yahoo, not to be confused with the Australian Yahoo or the mid 2000s search engine is, as you would probably expect, pretty tall and full of hair. The thing that sets this one apart is its terrifying war cry, which it is obviously named after, which is probably much scarier to hear before you've seen the ads. Yahoo! The Tennessee Wildman. The Tennessee Wildman is slightly different to the other Bigfoots, only in the way that he's said to look a lot more like a man than an ape. He's big, he's hairy, and whenever he sees people, he's known to let out a blood curdling yell which is pretty much the description of Counter-Strike players. This one was interesting because uh, I've seen this one interchangeable with the orange eyes uh, due to them both being in Ohio, but I can't tell if they're actually one and the same or whether they're a different thing because they sort of have their own law, but people group them as one. So just for this, I'm gonna separate them and but just keep that in mind the grass man gets its name from building structures like huts and nests out of the tall grass the first sighting began in 1978 in the village of minerva ohio the unfortunate victims were the claytons who found the animal in a gravel pit rooting through its trash before running away but this wasn't the last time they see the grass man the see up on the hilltop once seeing two of them and even found it staring at them through their kitchen window one night but disappeared when the husband went to get the gun this is interesting because Similar to quite a few on this list, this dates back like centuries, like the 1800s, like the colonials saw it, and then also the 1700s where the Native Americans saw it and actually called them the people of the woods. So you have to wonder if we're going back centuries, uh, different cultures, different religion, different people, different races, everyone is reporting the same thing. At some point, is there just something to it? The Orange Eyes Orange Eyes is said to live under a cemetery in Cleveland, Ohio, close to Mill Lake. It gets its name from, you probably guessed it, its big orange glowing eyes. Whew, that was, that was not tasty. The most interesting part about this one is that it does actually segue us out of Bigfoot country uh, because it is intertwined with another cryptid also from this exact same place. Charles Mill Lake Monster this one is actually pretty interesting, especially in its descriptions. Reported in 1959 by three teenage boys to have seen a seven foot tall amphibious humanoid with no arms, webbed feet, and luminous green eyes emerge from the near black waters. I do feel kind of skeptical on this one, not because it's three teenage boys, because I mean, listen, I saw my fair share of like the supernatural when I was a teenager, but mainly because this was five years after Creature from the Black Lagoon had released and I feel like that was very much still in the cultural zeitgeist. It's also worth noting here that with Orange Eyes and the Lake Monster both being in the same area, both having glowing colored eyes, both scaring people, people are starting to wonder, are they related? And the answer is no, because one is an amphibian and the other is a primate and that's not how that works. It is also speculated that much with a lot of other cryptids that have glowing eyes, um, that the glow is just the glare back from the torches that they'd use. I did try to find out more about this one, but literally every single web page I went to um, seemed to have the exact same copy and paste paragraphs uh, about the lore of the monster, which there was a lot, there was a lot, but also it was hard to find multiple sources on this one. Um, but as with any of these, if you do have your own experiences with these cryptids or other cryptids, please leave them in the comments. I absolutely want to hear them. The Cumberland Dragon. Dragon D is not Seen only once in 1974, the Cumberland Dragon was allegedly seen by two scouts ahead of their mounted infantry around 15 miles into the Cumberland Mountains. They said it stood on two feet, around four foot tall, had brown and black scales with yellow spots like rings, large red eyes, and a head as big as a two pound stone. It was said to have stared at the man for around three minutes before standing up and posturing to them. But the men, uh, told not to fire at anything that wasn't an Indian, uh, took out their swords instead and started hitting it. It then proceeded to jump eight feet into the air and spray a red matter like blood and then run away into the thicket. Which, to be fair, if someone came into my house and started hitting me with a sword, I'd probably spray blood and run away as well. One of the funniest parts of this is that it apparently left footprints that are like that of a really large 
goose. Which begs the question, did these military men get punked out by a large goose? Although there was only one actual reported sighting, uh, the Native Americans also did say that they do know the creature. Um, so technically this isn't a one-off sighting. And that's where we're gonna leave it for part one. Uh, I do have a part two coming. Uh, I do have pretty much everything ready for it. I just don't, I find really, really long videos quite overbearing. So I don't wanna be putting them out with the expectation that people have to watch everything. But part two will be up soon. I really want to continue this series uh, branching out into other parts of the world, finding cryptids just weird and wonderful, um, as well as sort of stories and just kind of just creepy kind of things, as well as like, you know, uh, true crime, uh, unsolved mystery, that kind of thing. Um, so if that's your bag, feel free to subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, do all that cool stuff. I do also stream at Twitch at The Pigeon Show, which I'm pretty sure you can find the links down below in the description. There we do stuff. You can't really describe it, but it's definitely stuff that we do there. Otherwise, I've been your host, Pigeon, and you are now on a government watch list. Sleep well.